Well, hey everybody, this is Chris DeFurio with Keys to the Shop. Welcome to another edition of Shift Break. Today's episode is brought to you by La Marzocco, who's been creating espresso machines by hand in Florence since 1927. Over the years, their innovations have been precisely to serve the market as we've evolved in specialty coffee. That's why La Marzocco is at the heart of so many of the world's best coffee shops. It's machines like the KB90 espresso machine with its ergonomic straight-in locking portafilters, the scales built into the drip tray for precision of your extractions. Then you've got the auto flush feature, which means that you get a way cleaner group head and it's easier to do, so it's better workflow. There's a lot to love there, and it's just one uh, example of many espresso machines that La Marzocco has created to suit your unique needs. La Marzocco is available to help you select the right equipment for your shop, so go ahead and reach out to them, info at lamarzoccousa.com. You can talk with one of their salespeople, and they'll get you set up in no time. If you're looking to start off on the right foot or just upgrade your current equipment, I highly recommend you use La Marzocco. Go ahead and visit their website as well over at lamarzoccousa.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Espressly. They create custom branded mobile apps for your cafe. They marry the convenience of mobile ordering with the look and the feel and just the experience of being in your coffee bar, but in the palm of your hand. Now with Espressly, this is a no risk model. You get a drive through payment scanner, receipt and label printing capabilities. All the data is stored in the app and it integrates with some of the world's best payment processing systems, including Square. So again, I highly recommend them. Really, they are huge supporters of the independent specialty coffee entrepreneur like yourself, and it absolutely shows in the quality of their work. Reach out to them and get started on your app today over at Espressly.co. That's Espressly.co. Okay, everyone. Well, today I wanted to talk about a concept, and that is the idea of doing well in the things that you hate. And this for me is one of those things that I learned the hard way when I was a barista years ago. I was, you know, first in specialty coffee in my early years. One of my first specialty coffee jobs was at Gimme Coffee in Ithaca, New York. And um, like most coffee people, I really loved coffee and I wanted to do coffee as you know for eight hours a day or whatever you know just wanted to stand behind the espresso machine and make shots of espresso and listen to cool music and and that was it that's all i wanted to do and so you know that's what i did but guess what i didn't do (laughs) other things like uh taking care of the condiment bar for example i i clearly remember i don't know why it's stuck in my head so much um, that and dishes at one of my previous jobs, um, they told me I was too slow at doing dishes. And to this day, I am competitive with my dishwashing. I'm very good now. <laughs> I've got to prove them wrong. I can do dishes well, but, um, you know, I, I didn't tend to the condiment bar. Now, if you were given a choice, A or B, you're standing there to your left is a beautiful espresso machine with wonderful coffee. And then to your right is a condiment bar that's kind of messy and it's got some, you know, cream and and sugar and whatnot. And they say, well, what what would you like to spend your time doing? Of course, coffee. But they said, you know, the whole cafe matters. You have to care for the condiment bar because this is what the job is, right? It's not just standing behind the bar. You have to diversify this. And so, you know, at first it felt like an affront to my artistic sensibility. Moi, just the the coffee artist, you know, go and tend to condiments and stuff. But of course, you know, you are young and, you know, stupid and you just kind of have to get over yourself over time. And thankfully that didn't last too long for me where I couldn't connect the dots and quickly realized, yes, of all the things that I got into coffee for, it was actually more the mechanisms that go into a great experience of a coffee bar Uh, and less about the actual artistry of the coffee, kind of. You know, the coffee is always going to be the passion, but in order to make it all work, to even just have a job making coffee, you have to actually make part of your job the um, surrounding things that support coffee. That is not just service, that's the functionality 
of the chairs and the tables, the bathrooms, the condiment bars, the outside seating areas, picking up cigarette butts. Um, it goes on and on, doing a good job shoveling the sidewalk in the winter. There's innumerable little things that, in our mind, are distractions from that just warm blanket of coffee that we want to immerse ourselves in. I want to scroll through all of these reels and, and posts of coffee professionals from around the world showing us their, you know, latte art and, you know, bar setups. And then we're going to be inspired to just do our own, you know, coffee stuff. And all the while, the bathroom has not been looked at in about three or four hours. Nobody cares because why should we? But down the line, what happens is we accumulate so much dysfunction in those other areas, people start to, as customers, care less about what we do as baristas because for them, it's less about that one thing and more about the total package. And so this is kind of a, you know, episode where we're talking about getting over yourself and getting a broader picture and learning how to care about things you hate and not, you know, hate's a strong word, they're really inconvenient. And this is one of those shockers that happens for most baristas, especially when they get into this with a lot of grandeur on their mind of, of what baristas can be. And today, go, becoming a barista is uh, front-loaded with more expectation because of media uh, saturation of coffee, way more than there was 10, 20 years ago. Um, so there's a lot more expectations to be completely dashed to pieces <laughs> by having to do things that are like, wow, I need like 20% of my job is actually making exciting coffees. And 80% of my job is stocking toilet paper and um, rotating inventory, remopping the floor because we spilled vanilla. I hate to think about that kind of thing as paying your dues. Um, it's not necessarily paying your dues. It's just tending to the big picture because when we don't tend to those details, the whole thing goes out of whack. And it's not just enough to do those things begrudgingly because what ends up happening is we start to foster this animosity that will eventually cause us to procrastinate, which means we will eventually let those things go. That's why bathrooms suck so much in coffee bars. That's why people develop different kinds of cheese inside the lids of creamers all over the country, right? Because people are just not paying attention to that stuff. We're not doing it with excellence because we don't believe it needs to be done with excellence, but you better believe we're going to see how many layers we can get in our tulip and our traditional cappuccino, and we're going to blog about it, and we're going to high five. But again, cheese in the creamer, come on. You know, uh, we, we do need to think about how to get over this hump of just begrudgingly doing the things that are inconvenient and finding ways to connect them to the greater mission of what we're about in coffee. That's creating great coffee experiences. And that's a way to get a foot in the door to let excellence be your default when it comes to even the most mundane tasks. Uh, you know, if we value the performance and skill of people who do, uh, you know, professional sports, Olympians, for example, there is an excellence that they bring to the repetition, to the mundanity of uh, swimming laps or practicing their swing and everything else. Um, for us, I think it extends beyond just locking in porta filters and pouring lattes and just doing it over and over again. Part of our practice is going out to the cafe, straightening up the retail. Part of it is learning how to speak to people as we're in the cafe at the POS station. It is a critical skill of a barista to remember to check the bathroom, to mop the floor in a thorough way, in an excellent way, with the same kind of uh, fervor that you would want to impress a uh, World Barista Championship judge with. So that to me feels like the big challenge in coffee right now is, you know, how do we build great businesses and operate um, a, a cafe so that all of the details are tended to with excellence? I mean, does it really bother you that that cobweb in the corner has been there for two months and nobody has touched it? Why doesn't that bother you? It really should. 
And the reason why it's not being taken care of is because we don't see the importance of it. And I, I say, you know, it, it, like you do, the way you do one thing is how you do everything. I say the place that kind of looks trashy and is comfortable in a trashy environment and allows the gradual decay and crumbling of the walls around them, all while tending to just the precious espresso machine, will eventually find that their coffee doesn't taste as good, that their service is lacking, and their customers will just feel uncomfortable. And then they'll scratch their head and say, well, why are people not coming in? And it's because we haven't learned to do the things that we don't like with excellence. And so let's go forward and lean into those things that really just make us bristle, but we know we have to do and start to turn our mindset toward how we can generate almost a love for those things. Make it a competition if you have to. I think the entire experience of coffee for you and your guests is going to be elevated, and that's how we create a better coffee industry overall. So I hope that this was helpful for you, just some ponderings on, on my part, and um, maybe it resonated with you. And I'm grateful for that. So as always, I'm grateful to also have you here on the show. Thank you so much. And as always, I'll see you here next week on another edition of Shift Break from Keys to the Shop.